say wherever you are. But with wine, for reason the reason is to prevent the intermittent deviation. It's really going to lose everything however we do it. Okay? So with Israeli wine, for a brief history, uh, Noah in the Torah and the Bible, the most recorded mention of winemaking uh, in the world, we know there's been at least three to four thousand years of hard evidence of winemaking in Israel. Go around Israel. There were thousands of wine presses actually cut into the limestone, which is also called Jerusalem stone here in Israel. Okay? Um, Jews paid Romans uh, wine to pay their taxes to the Romans because there wasn't gold or silver here to pay tribute to them. Uh, but 1,300 years, there was a suspension of the commercial quality wine industry here in Israel because there was uh, Islamic rulers here um, up until 1917 when the British liberated from the Ottoman Turks. Uh, the commercial uh, quality wines or Kiddush wines were being made here. And uh, up until uh, the 1880s, 1890s, Baron Rothschild, uh, a Jewish family uh, from uh, the Bordeaux region, um, brought uh, quality wines back into Israel. They started planting grapes in the Sikron uh, Yaakov area in Rishon Lezion. And there was about 300 different growers who were collective growers. But they still were making good quality wines until about the 1980s. And what happened was the Golan Heights winery, uh, they planted grapes in the Golan Heights first in 1976, since Israel's most northern wine region, highest altitude. And their first harvest, uh, their first vintage was 1983. And it was the first big winery in Israel to really stress making quality wines here in Israel since back uh, in Byzantine times. In 1985, uh, one of the growers from the Carmel Collective broke off from them, and it started a big movement. It was actually the Tishbe Winery, which we're going to be trying today. They're the biggest uh, family winery here in Israel, and about uh, 35 million bottles in Israel to make a million bottles at the winery. Uh, their first winemaker started the first boutique winery here. Uh, it's the Marguerite Winery. Uh, Yair Marguerite actually writes texts for UC Davis, and they're used throughout all the world. Uh, the latitude of Israel is between 29 and 33 degrees latitude. Most of the good wine regions in the world are between 35 and 45 degrees. So how do we make good wine in Israel? It's altitude. Every five feet you get in altitude, you get about a mile in latitude. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember that. Okay. So um, what happened was we have about in the last 10 years what ended up making for good wine here, uh, the rebirth, it's better vineyards. We took the south central coastal lowlands, which makes some of our less expensive, uh, lower quality wines, and we started planting a lot more vineyards up in the Galilee, the Golan Heights, the Judean Hills, which are more north and east but higher altitude. Okay, the higher altitude, highest altitude is 1,100 meters in Golan Heights. So that gives you about 700 miles, which is basically the whole length of France. So we can emulate a lot of better winemaking regions here, even though we're southern. Okay? Uh, we have a better choice of wine grapes. We went from uh, white uh, Simeon and Emerald Grisin and Columbard for bulk production to Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, which are the two premium white wines. But then we also now have Villeneuve and Hertz Schmieder, white recently coming out uh, in Israel as well, too, and also white Muscat. Uh, the red grapes, we had Grenache and Carignan Petit Syrah making bulk wines. And then we have Cabernet Merlot as our two premium grapes, Shiraz and Syrah, and Pinot Noir coming online. And Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec, Zinfandel, Sangiovese, some Italian varietals, Tempranillo and Barbera. The winemakers have gotten a lot better. They used to be a lot very homegrown. They didn't know anything about winemaking. Now most of our winemakers have gone to either UC Davis, Burgundy, Bordeaux, Milan, Adelaide in Australia, South Africa, New Zealand, or Canada. So they've gone to all the best wine schools. They're stressing quality over religion. All the wines used to be babushal. They used to be cooked uh, to make them uh, good enough for people of the highest religious orders. Now we're looking for more of a common denominator, and we try to stress quality over the religion of the wine. So if people do blind tastings, no one can really tell the wine's kosher anymore. Technology, we're using the best technology in the world. Uh, they've been spending tens of million dollars in the best tanks, the best oak barrels from France. Um, so, in drip irrigation, was actually invented here in Israel for the wine industry and it's revolutionized wine industry all over the world. So, we're going to be uh, trying four different wines today. Uh, you're going to be able to take, hopefully pick up some of the differences between the different grapes. There's over 3,000 different wine grapes in the world. So, the, it's one of the most interesting things about wine grapes is genetically they're quite different. And they sometimes it's the flavor profiles. If you ate the grape, like if you had the table grapes, you can never tell the difference. It's when you change the chemistry of the grapes in fermentation that these flavors start emerging. Um, so people ask, is there cherry in the wine? Is there raspberry in the wine? No, but it's the chemical similarities that make you see those, sense those flavors when you're drinking the wine. Okay? So we're going to have Pinot Noir, which originated in Burgundy and Champagne. 
has red cherry, strawberry, raspberry, cola, tea, mushroom, and some incense and smoke flavors. Merlot, which started in Bordeaux. Dark plum and cherries, chocolate, fruitcake flavors. Cabernet Sauvignon, which also started in Bordeaux. And we're going to have uh, cassis, which is black currant, black cherry, dark plum, tobacco, leather, green pepper. Shiraz, Syrah, which started in the northern Rhone Valley. Blueberry, blackberry, black pepper, leather, espresso. The perfume. Okay. That was my five minutes. Did I go five minutes or ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs>